All right, welcome back. So on deck today is going to be something a little different, uh, kind of an experiment. So what we have is two Brownells BRN, uh, this is the 177 and the 601 retro rifles. Now these rifles have the 1 in 12 inch twist, which would be correct for the periods that they were uh, replicating. Uh, and as many people know, a 1 in 12 inch twist is limited on the ammo selection that you can use, typically up to about 60 grain or so for traditional lead core type ammo. Uh, in specifically, uh, what we know we can't use, 62 grain green tip. Now, there's uh, some misconception on what twist rate it actually takes to stabilize this round. Um, 1 in 12 will not properly stabilize it. However, 1 in 9 is actually the optimal twist for this projectile. So the 1 in 7 twist that is common today and standard today was actually to stabilize tracer ammunition. Uh, so you actually only need a 1 in 9 to stabilize a 62 grain green tip. But uh, since there's ammo crunch going on and ammo shortages and the fact that rifles are now being produced yet again with 1 in 12 inch twist barrels and you can find these barrels and upper receivers, the curiosity was what happens if we use 62 grain green tip in a 1 in 12 inch twist? What kind of accuracy can we expect? Can we hit anything? And if we can hit something, how will it change the terminal performance? So uh, again, this is kind of more out of curiosity, kind of out of fun. Uh, and then again, maybe this might be a situation with ammo shortages where all you might have or be able to find is green tip. Maybe you have a one in 12 inch uh, twist rifle. Uh, and you know, hey, how effective could this possibly be if you were forced to use it? So uh, again, we have a BRN 177. Uh, this has a 12.7 inch barrel with the permanently attached uh, faux uh, flash hider and the BRN601 with a full 20 inch barrel. Well, I fired these out of the, the 177, so I already have an idea, but we're gonna do it again just to confirm. I have not fired it out of the 601, so we'll see if that uh, translates across uh, that if it's rifle specific or uh, is there just a general expectation you can have. Uh, this 177 is sporting a retro Gen 2 Armson OEG. Uh, occluded eye gun sight, which uh, if those of you familiar with the Sante prison raid in the 1970s, uh, fantastic uh, special ops mission. If you've never heard of it, I highly suggest you uh, you look it up because it's a, a fantastic story uh, in the use of the Air Force version of 177, which was the GAU-5 and the Armson OEG. Now, this is not the original sight. This is the Gen 2 Retro, uh, but I thought it would just be fitting to throw it on this rifle. Uh, so that's what you're seeing here. And of course, on our Retro 601, we have a Retro 4 Power Scope. So we're going all retro today with a little bit of a 1980s twist. So we'll do a 50-yard accuracy test from each of these, uh, and then we'll go ahead and check out the, the terminal effects. All right, and we're going to do the best we can at 50 yards with this OEG. Uh, it is uh, not going to be as precise as a typical red dot sight, um, but, you know, it still should be fun to do. Alrighty, let's go check it out. Alright, so fired five. We have five. You can see the, the oblong shaped holes here, so the round is not properly stabilized. Uh, however, uh, we have one little flyer here, uh, and that's that was actually more of my fault. Again, this OEG is not as precise as a normal red dot, uh, which of course is then less precise than a, a regular scope. So take that into account. However, in the past when I did this, I had about a fist size group, uh, and that's pretty much what we have four rounds in the size of a fist, and then our one flyer still be covered by hand. Okay, but uh, yeah, so roughly about a fist size group, uh, if you do your part, seems to still be what it's capable of doing. So let's go ahead and put this through the 20 inch barrel with the more power, uh, the better scope, and we'll see if we could tighten this up a bit, or is this just about what you can expect.
All right, let's go check it out. Okay, again, uh, we're not zero for this ammo, but uh, interestingly, the rounds appear to be more stable. Now, I can still see egging, egg-shaped ovals, uh, so there is still instability there, but through the 20-inch barrel, at this altitude, we're right on the ragged edge. Uh, it's still not fully stabilized, but it's not as bad as the 12.7-inch barrel. Uh, but it, we're about 3,500 feet elevation, so if you drop down a couple thousand feet, uh, you'll probably see more instability. Um, but... Uh, with that said, accuracy is still quite good for what it is, uh, easily inside of a fist. Uh, again, you can see slight egging on the holes. So, um, yeah, so about a fist is what it seems like you can expect as far as accuracy. So, now that we see we can actually hit something, let's see what the terminal effect is. Okay, for our terminal portion, uh, we're going to use uh, our standard uh, water jugs. Uh, but... A little bit different. We're not so much worried about the overall penetration like we would in the past. What we want to look at more is the difference between firing this to a standard 1 and 7 twist. Uh, in this case, it'll be a short barrel X95. This is a 13-inch barrel. Uh, the 177 has a 12.7-inch barrel, so we should be real close in terms of velocity. Uh, but this one does have a 1 and 7 twist. So what we want to see is, hopefully, by using these thinner water bottles, uh, about 3 and a half inches thick, hopefully we'll see it at some point in either bottle one or two where the round begins to destabilize uh, we should see a lot more cavitation and explosion happen the bottles are numbered uh, so that's kind of all we're looking for is will we see a difference in that the point this round destabilizes uh, and then starts to go to work or is it going to be very similar uh, if it passes through all our jugs i am expecting some fragmentation uh, they may skirt out the side these things happen uh, but we do have a, a little bullet catch in the back if if the penetrator and whatnot goes straight uh, maybe we can catch the projectile and kind of get a better idea of what happened but that's really what we're looking for is how quickly it destabilizes so let's go ahead and get this going okay and first up will be our standard one in seven twist All right, let's see what happened. As you can see in jug one, as the round was exiting, it began to uh, destabilize, which is about what I would expect, about a 3.75-ish neck, basically point of travel before the bullet starts to really yaw. Uh, and then and you can see, obviously in jug two, the round has turned sideways and begun to fragment, as you could tell by the uh, extreme uh, explosiveness of the uh, hydraulic effect. Uh, jug three, also, really torn up. Uh, I do see fragments on the table, but I cannot find any large fragments, nor can I find the penetrator. Uh, I don't see an impact in the back, so I'm guessing this skirted out the side, which is pretty typical when the round fragments. Everything just kind of starts to go all over the place. So uh, we did have some fragmentation, uh, and we did see... Uh, Towards the back of the first jug was where it started to really go to, or started to go to work, and then in jug two was really where it went to, went to work. So let's see if the one in twelve inch twist shows us anything different. Wow! All right, let's go check that out, and that's some pretty clear results. Uh, this is actually jug one, uh, and as you can see, it is completely exploded likely because the round was already partially destabilized when it made impact which means it had virtually no neck it's not traveling point forward for any real distance into the target which means you get instant cavitation fragmentation as long as you're at a certain velocity uh and yeah a pretty explosive effect even in a thin target uh you can obviously tell jug two your multiple impacts ripped apart so fragments, uh, jug three, we actually had a piece come out here, which is probably that penetrator. Uh, jug four, we actually have an exit on the back of four. I don't see anything in it. We actually cut jug five. It looks like it kept going off to the side. So probably that steel penetrator. We do have a couple fragments on the table. So uh, clearly, uh, yeah, pretty interesting result. Uh, sort of what I expected. Uh, but it's it's neat to actually see it in practice, to actually see it applied. Uh, so let's go ahead and take this to the tailgate and wrap this up. And I have to make a correction. Uh, I found the projectile. It was in the final jug, uh, and it is not fragmented. It is squished down, and fragments did squeeze out of the base, which would explain the small fragments I found on the table. Uh, but it actually did not 
fragment. So I'm assuming by what I'm seeing here, the round out of the X95 also did not fragment. Uh, however, uh, there was a noticeable difference in the time frame it took to destabilize the round, whereas the 1 in 7 uh, didn't really get its full destabilization until about a 4 inch, 4 and a half inch range, uh, whereas in the uh, 1 in 12 it was virtually instantaneous. Uh, so that would make a difference uh, in the time, uh, depending on if, you know, the thickness of the target you're shooting at, uh, the 1 in 12 twist uh, would certainly uh, de basically it's already destabilized the moment it's hitting so you don't have to worry about how thick the target is your round's going to go sideways whether or not it'll fragment you know that could depend on s uh, other factors that M855 is known to be spotty on uh, but however this is a uh, as long as it stays sideways for a good length of travel it is similar to an expanded projectile the way it's squeezed down uh, you're getting this full profile as it's traveling sideways so uh, which it looks like it did for a fair a pretty fair distance uh, judging by what we saw here so so, um, yeah, I wouldn't have known this if I hadn't have found a projectile. Uh, I did see uh, some fragments on the table, but it's clear now that those were just uh, little fragments squeezing out of the base of the bullet. So I am surprised these didn't fragment, even out of these shorter barrels at this close of a range. But, hey, that's why it's fun to test this stuff, because sometimes you'll get some, uh, some results you don't really expect. But, nonetheless, we did get some, uh, some noticeably different results. Uh, so let's go ahead and take it to the tailgate and wrap it up. All right, so I figure I'd go ahead and give you a close-up of the bullet. Uh, you can see it's flattened out at the base uh, under the uh, steel penetrator. Uh, and in essence, once that bullet turns sideways, you pretty much have uh, a pseudo expanded projectile. Uh, and you can probably expect some similar type terminal performance of a non fragmenting expanding projectile, uh, at least for the, the travel that it stays sideways in the target anyway, which does appear was pretty good. Looked like it was a pretty good amount of the track. It actually stayed sideways. So, uh, all right, guys, so what's, what's the takeaway from all this? How, it, you know, what's the point of all this? Well, uh, the 1 in 12 inch twist uh, has gone out of favor for quite a long time now, but now it's coming back, not necessarily because it's you know some favorite it's for the retro series of rifles and you can find uppers and barrels and whatnot actually production built now with the one in 12 inch twist uh and maybe that's the only rifle you have uh maybe you have a significant amount of m855 lying around and you want to put together a build with a 12 inch upper on it uh could it improve the terminal performance well yes at closer range you know i'm not sure at what distance this is going to drop off and just become completely inaccurate i assume it's going to slow down quicker uh just due to not being quite point first and and flying kind of wonk it's going to be more air resistance so at what extended distance i'm not sure but for closer range work maybe shooting pigs maybe even home defense i don't know uh that's up to you guys maybe uh maybe you got a bunch of this lying around you don't have any other good ammo uh so maybe putting together a, a 12 inch uh, upper might be uh might be a viable option i don't know but that's up to you guys to figure out and you know put it into your uh your toolbox if you would and do whatever the heck you want with it but i just thought it was kind of fun to come out and do and was quite entertaining and uh i just share that with you so if you like this kind of content guys go ahead and comment down below let me know what you guys think. Uh, like and subscribe, share the video, helps the channel out. Uh, as always, I appreciate the comments, but please keep those comments professional, and I'll see you guys next time.